In this section, we're going to be looking at the elbow. The elbow is examined based upon our clinical findings. We rarely view the entire elbow or do a complete examination. We typically go to the area that we're most interested in because most complaints about the elbow are rather well localized. We'll break the elbow into four quadrants, anterior, medial, lateral, and posterior, and we're going to start now with the anterior elbow. We're going to start by placing the probe slightly proximal to the elbow so that we can see the biceps muscle and the brachialis muscle, this being the humerus. As we bring the probe distally, we'll see how the biceps tendon becomes formed as this bright area over the top of the image. As we continue to move the probe distally, that tendon will begin to dive deeply into the tissues. We'll stop right about here where we can see the biceps tendon. This little circular area down in here with the bright tissue in it is the anterior fat pad of the elbow. Effusions within the elbow will displace that fat pad anteriorly. If we tilt the probe ever so slightly more distally, we'll next come to the joint line. Here, medially, we see the trochlea, and here, we see the capitellum or capitulum. If we slide slightly more distally, we'll see the head of the radius and the annular ligament over the top is this bright area right in through here. Dynamically, having the patient internally and externally rotate the arm allows us to evaluate a good portion of the radial head. Good, and relax. As we move the probe medially, and we apply a little bit of pressure, this pulsation here represents the brachial artery. Just beneath, we'll see the median nerve. And just laterally, the biceps tendon. We'll now switch the probe to a longitudinal position so that we can examine the anterior elbow. This view, which we saw before in the transverse view, represents the anterior fat pad of the elbow. If we slide laterally, we'll come to the capitellum, radial head, Despite the fact that the biceps tendon is very superficial, it can be very difficult for us to visualize, even though we can palpate the tendon and put the probe directly over it. What we'll try to do if we look at the biceps tendon in an anterior view is to get a slight angle on the probe. Here's the biceps tendon angling from superior left to inferior right or distally as we angle and move towards the radial tubercle. The distal biceps tendon can be very difficult to see in the anterior view of the elbow. Several alternative techniques have been developed to look at it. One of them that's very easy to do, particularly for somebody who's beginning, is to have the patient fully pronate their hand, bringing the radial tuberosity to the back side of the elbow. Here we can clearly see the radial head, and there is the radial tuberosity, and the structure directly on top of that is the biceps tendon. I'm going to decrease the depth a little bit because this is very superficial here. And now I'm going to turn the probe 90 degrees and right here is the distal aspect of the biceps tendon. And if I take his hand and internally and externally rotate it, you'll see that aspect of the biceps tendon right here. This is a very distal aspect of the biceps tendon. Now we only see a little portion of it, but if we want to evaluate that very distal aspect of it, this is a good view to do that in.